are these people? Once again, uh, we have another tragedy, tragedy in Israel, more specifically the West Bank this time, uh, regarding this young woman. Uh, her name is, and I'm going to butcher her name. If I get it wrong, I apologize, but I sent her edgy. I guess that's how you say it. Uh, but she was martyred over the weekend uh, protesting in the West Bank uh, over the illegal settlements that are, are happening over there. Um, so we felt, obviously, I know other people in the space have talked about it, but we have some updates to the story that we wanted to share. Um, so I'm going to pull up this article from Mint Press News, uh, thanks to Greg Stoker, uh, who we, actually we haven't done many articles from him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have. Mm -hmm. I've done a few. You have, but uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So he wrote this article uh, regarding um, her death. Uh, so he writes, a center edgy, American lives matter, but not all of them. So edgy, edgy. Let's I wonder get how that is pronounced. Edgy. Yeah, mm. I guess I'm not. I guess edgy. I guess it's a Turkish name, but Turkish. I guess that's how you would Turkey. Say it. Yeah. Not happy with the leader of Turkey, by the way, right now. Um, but anyway. Yeah. Um, um, so, so Greg writes, on February 3rd, 2024, President Biden declared, if you harm an American, we will respond. Uh -huh. His remarks followed the death of three U.S. service members stationed at an airbase in Jordan, reportedly caused by a suicide drone attack launched by an Iraqi militia. However, the statement brings into sharp relief the unequal value placed on American lives in different contexts. Yep. The killing of 26-year-old activist Asensur Eji, Eshi Eji by Israeli military forces last Friday underscores this double standard. While the U.S. State Department has publicly mourned the death of Israeli-American citizen Hirsch Gobor Poland and promised swift retribution against Hamas, it has Hamas. largely remained it has remained largely silent on Edgy's death. Aside from a single vague comment by Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, mm -hmm. the U.S. government has failed to meaningfully address the killing, prioritizing its strategic interests in West Asia over the loss of any particular American life. The U.S. government is unlikely to respond meaningfully to Edgy's death, as its focus remains on maintaining its imperialistic sphere of influence in West Asia, rather than prioritizing the safety of individual Americans. I mean, this is among many Israel, you know, like Rachel Corey comes to mind. Quite a few have lost their lives in this regard. Right. So, unfortunately. And this is the third, and this is the third. Those U.S. Death. aid workers. American death. It related to Israel, Gaza this year. Since October. So, yeah. Well, this year. Alone. Yeah. So, Jesus. Um, but mainstream media has already attempted to highlight Edgy's Turkish ethnicity, subtly framing her as an other to deflect attention from the fact that she was a victim of her own country's foreign policy complicity. As with similar instances, incidents, Israel will likely investigate itself, ultimately absolving its military of systemic wrongdoing, or at most attributing the blame to a single soldier, ignoring the broad policy of targeting citizens. So if we take all, the username all the screen. Yeah. yeah. So I actually saw this, I believe it was on Monday, which I think um, sums this up very well. So at Village, Cra Village Crazy Lady uh, tweeted, Notice how all these Zionist shills are taking extra steps to call Accentra Edgy, edgy a Turkish-American, quote-unquote. The not-so-subtle implication being that she's not a real American. Never mind that she actually lived in America, went to school in America. In America. She was... All her family is in America. Uh, she was born here. Yeah, uh, went, to here, went to school here in and everything. Washington. She just graduated. What's University of Washington in the spring? Yeah. So she lived. He, she is American. It's just how she's of Turkish descent. Um, 
they're going to do everything they can to suggest you as much less American than you or I. Now, just suppose that with how they talk about Hirsch Goldberg Poland, Hirsch had not lived in America since he was a small child. He had no connection to our country whatsoever besides his passport. <laughs> and yet Barat Ravid, who she quote tweets below, only identifies him as the American hostage, not the Israeli American, just the American. Um, so this is the tweet or tweets that she referenced from him uh, regarding how, um, you know, President Biden spoke to the parents of Hirsch Goldberg Poland, the American hostage who was murdered by Hamas in Gaza, the White House says, as well as Turkish American activists killed in occupied West Bank. The White House asked Israel to investigate the incident on uh, his report on Axios. So mainstream media kind of downplaying the story of, regarding her, whereas there was a lot of talk uh, about Hirsch, I think a couple of weeks ago, when, by the way, he was a uh, reserve for the IDF, killed by the IDF, <laughs> which that seemed to get lost in the yeah. sauce. Um, whereas this young lady was killed by um, IDF. the IDF in the West Bank, by the way. So this had nothing to do with Hamas. Yeah. Because Hamas is not in the West Bank. They're going to try to claim that Hamas has. It, you know, move to the West Bank since there's right. increasingly less and less land in the Strip, which I wonder why that might be. Like, right? Oh, um, Edgy is the third American to be killed in the West Bank since military operations escalated earlier this year. The other two victims, both 17 year old Palestinian Americans were Taufik Abdel Jabbar, sorry for the pronunciation of the name, a Louisiana native shot in January by an Israeli officer and a settler, and Mohammed Kadur, a Floridian who was fatally shot in the head by an Israeli gunman weeks later. Both of those pictures are to the left. Despite expressing regret over both killings, the U.S. government has refrained from initiating independent investigations instead of relying on Israel to investigate itself. The president of the Foundation for Middle East Peace, Lara Friedman, told The Intercept on Friday that such lackluster responses have become a de facto policy in reaction to these recurring killings. The policy of the U.S. government, both the executive and legislative branches, has effectively been that not all Americans are equal when it comes to dying in a conflict between Israelis and Palestinians. Israeli Americans are worth fighting for accountability, and Palestinian Americans and Americans who stand with them are not. It almost feels farcical to have them say that out loud because the record is so clear. Mm -hmm. I agree. The events since October 7th have shown that much of the mainstream media aligns itself with Western gov government policies, offering apologies for Israel, downright downplaying <laughs> atrocities, and obscuring the reality on the ground. This media complicity mirrors the same hypocrisy and double standards that define Washington's approach. So actually, we'll play this in a second. Uh, so this was, um, I think this is hashtag Saga. Um, oh, yeah, 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 Patel. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, Patel. Uh, so obviously, you know, he was asked about this in the press conference, and basically, you know, he duck, dodged, dipped, like, dived, dick, dive, dodge, whatever, uh, in order to, you know, downplay Accenture's martyrdom. Yeah. Um, so you can play that and just see the ridiculousness that he tried Sorry, to do. Thank you, Vedant. Yeah. Do you actually condemn the actual act of killing an, an American citizen protesting, uh, you know? the aggression of, let's say, the Israeli occupation army. So you condemn the act of the killing itself. Let's, Do you condemn that act? Let's just be uh, very clear. Of course, uh, we would condemn the death. Whenever you hear one of these people say, I want to be very mm -hmm. clear, they are amount to be vague, manipulative, and, like, completely obfuscate you, and to be completely right. obtuse on purpose. So let's... let's right. See that unclearness. The aggression of, let's say, the Israeli occupation army. So you condemn the act of the killing itself. 
let's you condemn that act. Let's just be uh, very clear. Of course, uh, we would condemn the death. Uh, uh, we we would uh, we we uh, the death of any American citizen right. is heartbreaking. Um, but let's be just very uh, precise and clear that I all the arms, not dude. speculate on what transpired on uh, oh, okay. on Friday. As those facts and those those processes are still being determined and adjudicated, and we're going to let that process play out. Who? Uh, By who? It is troubling. It is tragic, uh, and it certainly uh, uh, there is a Jesus uh, Christ, bro. Here Get it together. To share as much information as possible, um, so that um, uh, Miss Ig's family has. Uh, the most appropriate Jesus uh, accounting of what exactly transpired and what happened here. Mm -hmm. uh, but Said, there is a process, and I'm just not going to uh, get ahead of that. And I will. Uh, I, when I'm will not you speak on behalf of our? our Should we come so back in like a week condemn. and see if you condemn a fucking dead American? Like Jesus Christ! Well, here's the thing. Well, here's the thing. Like I thought about this today. If the American had the right amount of melanin, yeah. Now you could call me racist all you want. Well, but like Rachel Corey, if the American had the right amount of melanin, this would be a bigger issue. Uh, Rachel Corey wasn't. I, I wish I was with you on that, but like, right? I mean, I, I would say you can make the argument that they wouldn't care either way, but yeah. I think if, if they were mm -hmm. uh, melanin deficient, especially because she. Like she was murdered, what twenty years ago or yeah. around that time? So, you know, obviously, like this idea of Hamas wasn't really as big. Then. Well, like the, like the U.S. aid workers was a lot bigger than this one. So, right, or the, which well, were uh, our peeps the in the WCK. region? Mm -hmm. right. WTC, the WCK, which got some Jose attention. Andres, Jose Andres's organization. Right. But so that kind of died down within like a week. Fortune. Yeah. So, but this even then, like people were talking universe. about it, and at least, and at least the Zionists were kind of acknowledging, like, "Oh, this was a mistake," and like, "and we're sorry," whatever, you know. But so, yeah, you're right. You can make the argument either way that they wouldn't care, but I still feel it would have gotten a little bit more attention. Yeah, I mean, if, if the person was melanin, slightly if, melanin deficient. <laughs> If we're asking the U.S. to condemn anything Israel has done, I mean, they just pretty much have the standard reply. We are the United States government. We don't do that sort of thing. Like. Shout out our IP. James yeah, Jones. <laughs> James Earl Jones. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. But. Oh. So. Anyway, so let's add a little bit more and give a little bit more specifics. So shout out to Dave DeCamp from antiwar.com yes, uh, who gives a little bit more information regarding what happened. So he writes Israel claims its forces unintentionally shot American activists in the head. The family of Accenture Ezi Edgy said it was deeply offended by the suggestion that her killing by a trained sniper was in any way unintentional. Uh, right. So Dave writes. Yeah, I accidentally pulled this trigger while the crosshair is. Uh, I just, yeah. The, the Israeli military on Tuesday said it was highly unlikely one of its soldiers shot and killed an American activist in the Israeli occupied West Bank, but claimed it was indirect and unintentional despite it being a headshot, a claim backed by President Biden. Yeah. Accenture Eji Eji, 26, was killed on September 6 while protesting illegal Israeli settlements in the West Bank village of Belta. Her family responded to the Israel, Israeli military statement, calling it wholly inadequate. So actually, this is their statement here, which I will read. The Israeli military's preliminary inquiry into Accenture's killing is wholly inadequate. We are deeply offended by the suggestion that her killing by a trained sniper was in any way unintentional. The disregard shown for human life in the inquiry is appalling. A censure, an activist, and volunteer was peacefully standing for justice as an international observer and witness to Palestinian suffering. She was taking shelter in an olive grove when she was shot in the head 
and killed by a bullet from an Israeli officer. This cannot be misconstrued as anything except a deliberate, targeted, and precise attack by the military against an unarmed civilian. As we mourn the death of our beloved Accenture, we reiterate our demand for the U.S. government leaders, President Biden, Vice President Harris, and Secretary of State Blinken, in order an independent investigation into the Israelis' military deliberate targeting and killing of a U.S. citizen. Israeli officials must be transparent and release the evidence they compiled to be reviewed by the family and independent authorities. In the wake of this unimaginable tragedy, we have also received unimaginable kindness. We thank those who have reached out to continue Accenture's work and carry on her legacy. While we navigate these twists and turns and come to grips with our grief, we ask for continued privacy. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, so I think that was very somewhat calm of them, I would argue, in light of what happened, but at least they did call out, you know, the administration that includes Biden and Harris to actually grow a pair and actually investigate Israel, but they won't. They won't. Um, they'll let they'll let Israel so investigate themselves, and Israel will find that they did nothing wrong. It's uh, you know, right? Same way they train our um, cops to do. So, right. Ugh. The Israeli military claimed that the shot that killed Edgy was not aimed at her, but the key instigator of a riot. However, the international solidarity movement, which organized the protest, said it was peaceful. And eyewitnesses said the protesters posed no threat to Israeli troops. I'm not going to read the next paragraph because that was implied in the previous yep. slide. At a press conference in London yesterday, Blinken said that no one should be shot and killed for attending a protest. I, he added that <laughs> Israeli security forces need to make some fundamental changes to the way they operate in the West Bank, including changes to their rules of engagement. You were going to say... I just, that's some fucking balls on Blinken, bro. To fucking say that. Like, bro, that you had people in this country get shot at at protests. Like, anyway, I just, but yeah. Like, practice what you preach, I guess. You know? Right. Uh, so, some more press conference stupidness. Uh, yeah. This is from at Allah Flow. Um, because apparently Biden still hasn't given condolences to the family as of now, as of this recording. Um, so you know, so let's continue more of the bullshit. Go ahead. The American citizen who was killed in the West Bank on Friday, uh, Isonar Ege, has the president had a chance to speak to the family at all? Um, and do you have any sense of uh, where the investigation stands? I know that you all had asked. Um, for the ball to get rolling on an investigation to her death. Do you know uh, if there are any updates on that? He has not spoken to the family uh, as of yet. I don't have a, a call to, to, uh, to talk about uh, today. Obviously, we continue to uh, mourn with, uh, with her family, of course. Um, the Israelis have uh, reached out, made sure that we knew that they uh, were promptly investigating this. Um, as I understand it from just before I came out here, they are moving swiftly on this investigation and will soon, we think, uh, in coming days, be able to present their, their findings and conclusions. We'll obviously hold our judgment until we see that. We've called for a complete, thorough, swift, and transparent investigation. We'll, we'll, see, we'll see what they right. do. Right. And what happens if it comes up that they did do, like, uh, uh, you know, like you could give both your answers of like, uh, you know, well, if, if w what, what people are saying happened happened then what we'll do is withhold weapons for this and you know they're not doing that they're scrambling they're just running out the clock hopefully people right. will get distracted and move on to the next thing so they probably did given the debate last night so. night right <laughs> right so yeah. um so you brought me this so we want it um well Actually, before we do that, so Caitlin, <laughs> I mean, you bought me this, but, and Caitlin, uh, yeah, goes hard, dude, hard, hard. <laughs> so, in response, like uh, a quote tweet from this actual article, Caitlin said, I mean, it was either that, 
like shot intention unintentionally shot or claim that she had a Hamas base in her skull. So, yeah. you know, so I mean, she, I mean, perfect response regarding yeah. the inaction of um, the Biden administration in calling this out or doing anything in response to this. Uh, you did brought, bring me the next clip, uh, next video, which I think even within the tragedy, I think we do want to kind of end somewhat yeah. positively. Um, so, so, uh, if you can zoom in, cause I can't see yep. who tweeted this. So this was at narrative, narrative hole. hole. Uh, they tweeted, this is how Palestinians honored a U.S. citizen. And to be clarified, she's not buried here. They just did the procession in the West Bank, I believe. And then her body will be, I believe, will be shipped to Turkey. Uh, mm. It's in place, I believe. She's not going to be, I think people were like, well, why is she being buried there? She's not. They're just honoring her there. And then her body will be sent over to Turkey, I believe, in her final resting place. Yeah. Uh, but to continue with the tweet, the U.S. government couldn't even acknowledge what Israelis did to her. So this is in the West Bank, uh, and she's given, I, I would say, a martyr's nope. procession. Right. So... Yeah. Let's play short clip, but we'll just see. Uh, which one is it? I think it's this. There we go. It's in that, yeah. You know, she's given the respect, you know, the Palestinians who are there. Uh, so, again, once again, just God, more tragedy upon more tragedy. And we're probably going to be talking about similar shit for the next, for God knows how long. I'm getting kind of tired of it. I mean, I'm getting <laughs> fatigued in talking about Israel. Like I say this yeah. every week, we shouldn't have to talk about Israel slash Gaza every single fucking week or if not make it every fucking story but this is the fact that mainstream media isn't doing their job isn't so doing their job to. yeah so but I think especially given this time this is an American for all intents and purposes yeah she was of Turkish descent but she was an American nonetheless she lived here she went to school here she just graduated I believe grad school here and she went to it and people were like well why is she protesting there because she can like she can so mm -hmm. and like the and like what people were saying online was like oh she threw rocks first of all that's not proven and even if you throw a fucking rock that doesn't give you an excuse to shoot someone in the head right like so you know fuck me with fuck with me over with that kind of bullshit thinking but you know it's I don't know. And to think, you know, we'll probably mention this in the next segment that I'm going to do, but it's the idea like, you know, last night, you know, Kamala, well, both her and Trump, you know, when it came to Israel, which is what I saw. Yeah, like it the was. One, one of no, the I love Israel. I was, no, no, you don't. I love Israel. Basically, and I'm like, these are the choices that we have in terms <laughs> of Israel. Yep. Like, and these are all the people who are like, oh no, we can't vote for Biden because his stance on Gaza and people like virtual singling, oh, I wrote in Gaza, yeah. you know, like in the primaries. Mm -hmm. But now Meanwhile, you're all in for Harris, who basically told you and like, and I'm tired of people like saying, oh, we have a chance of actually getting a ceasefire, a chance of getting a ceasefire from Kamala. Nothing she has not will said fundamentally like change. That she anything said is so. Change. Right. Like, and you don't believe her. But yet you're going with the faith slash hope slash joy, whatever she's promoting. Mm -hmm. Like, 
because you believe that Trump is going to be much worse. And yeah, he's going to be much worse. But what standards <laughs> does that say when we're up and Biden already kind of giving him a head start? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so as I said, we'll get more. I'll probably go off a little bit more in the next segment of what I do. But, you know, like I said, we want to give this young woman her respect and as we've been doing quite a bit um, in terms mm -hmm. of short life, but the legacy that she left in terms of actually uh, defending the Palestinians and wanting liberation for them. Uh, so we just wanted to acknowledge her in terms of her life and what she did. And, you know, just wanted to share with you all, like, especially with these updates, how it's just very sad that an American uh, has passed away, not passed away, killed uh, by Israeli forces in the West Bank. And our response is meh. So yep. just really sickening. It really is. Um, oh, I mean, this is what democracy looks like, literally. You know? But, yeah, I, I don't anyway, know. Anyway, but reporting on stories like these is why we're demonetized and YouTube hates our guts that they do not push our content. So, if you want to help us out with that, you can scan the QR code that you see on your screen or go to the link that you see at the bottom of your screen or click or type in do at uh explanation point donate in the chat yeah, on boy. YouTube to, to see the link and you can donate to us directly um so we definitely appreciate your donations in in trying to grow and also to fund the causes that we're trying to fund yeah. um you can also well. I got what it. Happened there? I moved it, and okay. then you moved it. And... Uh, um, but please feel free. Don't forget to like and subscribe uh, to the channel. Uh, please share our content in order to fight suppression, and make sure to leave a comment and let us know what you think in terms of Accenture's martyrdom uh, or anything regarding to Israel, Gaza, and the West Bank. Let us know in the comments if you're watching the clip or you're in the chat of what you're thinking uh, and help us get to 3K. You know, we've actually been growing somewhat quickly now, but we definitely want to continue in order for our content to possibly make a dent in the YouTube algorithm. Uh, yeah. Possibly, but not counting on it, but whatever. Um, and thanks for watching. Thank you.